Sometimes in Michigan you find the occasional hillbilly. Not often, but those people will know this. But here's the thing. Down in Appalachia, in the slums of Appalachia where we're from, uh, people have a hard time telling each other apart. When your gene pool is not even hardly a puddle, uh, no lifeguard needed. Uh, just a wet spot on the ground. It sometimes gets hard to tell uh, daddy brother from any of the other rednecks that you know. And um, what happened was a lot of people, they, they couldn't figure out ways to tell each other apart, but West Virginians finally figured out. And what they done was they just decided to become more economical with the talk than all other people in the world. And, and you might notice if a West Virginian even knows one word, he tries to get all the mileage out of it he can. If you think about it, they never even went all out trying to name their state because Virginia had already been thought of. And Virginia was actually named after Queen Elizabeth, the 16th century Queen Elizabeth, because she was the Virgin Queen in spite of everything the Earl of Essex tried. And then, uh, like all other states, they'd get... They'd get named after different queens, too, until they run out of queens because they couldn't. Well, I don't even want to go there anymore. <laughs> San Francisco, it has to have its own town, even. Well, I told you that to tell you this. Once they had a good name on their state, they sent this pioneer over in there looking for stuff, and he found this new river. And then... Uh, pure West Virginia tradition, he named it the New River. And uh, once they had a good name on their states and their rivers and things, they, in West Virginia they happened to find these minerals and they wanted to haul them out of there and they couldn't think of no way to do this except build a train right along the New River and historians will testify I'm making this correct. They called it the New River Train. But here's where the plot began to sicken. Eventually they come to this big mountain course it was called the New River Mountain and they couldn't think of no way to get that train through it except to build a tunnel and back in these old days there was two schools of tunnel building there was the Neanderthal school where they would just get John Duffy and Rush Limbaugh and three or four other Neanderthals and go in the map and cut away everything that never looked like a tunnel but they had this more monitor technique called the J.D. Cro-Magnon technique where they would drive these big pieces of pipe down in the mountain and drop dynamite in it, blow it up, and it would make the tunnel easier to carry away. Well, told you that to tell you this. The best pipe driving man that ever lived was a man named John Henry. He worked on the New River Mountain Tunnel. And John Henry, a lot of people think John Henry drove railroad spikes. Not true. That was an entirely different ethnic group. John Henry drove pipe in the mountain. He respected the mountain the next day. But when they went to write a song about it, of course, they couldn't call it John Henry the Pipe Driving Man. Because that title had already been took by one of the videotapes in Clarence Thomas's library. So they just called it John Henry the Steel Driver.
put uh, some kind of hard strings on my mandolin. I just can't play it very well. I'm going to be an alligator. This song uh, was written uh, by a man we lost just a couple weeks ago. Probably the greatest. Uh, well, Frank Sinatra said he was the second greatest singer ever in American history. <laughs> and Frank Sinatra was not known for his humility. But uh, it was George Jones. And uh, when George... A lot of people don't know it, George Jones was a Marine before he became a country singer. And uh, after he got out of the Marines, he, uh, he started a little band down in Texas, and uh, people would pick on him. And uh, evidently that's not a smart thing to do. George was a fairly small man, but he'd been a Marine. And so one night this big knife fight broke out in one of those Texas bars, and it was... Uh, three or four people got cut up. One of them was George. He was on one side and the other three were on the other side and they all had to be driven to the hospital. And while George was laying there on the table waiting to be sewed up, he wrote this song. And uh, from early on, it shows you what kind of soul the great George Jones had. Soon 
1836, and the Dobro Adam is about to be split by a man named Bashful Brother Oswald. And when that Adam was split, it probably sounded like this. Uh escape from one of our favorite bluegrass songwriters. His name was uh, Sam Cook. <laughs> and uh, Sam really liked bluegrass music, I'm told, and wrote this song just for him.
Sanders. This is one from the 16th century England, as Brian sings. I don't even know what part of Kentucky England's in. <laughs> Yes. The question was, is that good or bad? The answer is yes. <laughs> I would like to announce that we have just about a half box carload of CDs left over here. and, um, and But mostly we have the Dry Branch Fire Squad, two foot long knives with uh, many, many functions. These knives, just as a conversation starter, have about a dozen functions. Now, you might think that we need the money, but we don't. Uh, but the people we owe does. So uh, we're heading out to Connecticut uh, tomorrow, so you'll buy some of this stuff. We really appreciate it. And hope to see you down the pike somewhere. we we'll leave you with this one.
be careful on the way home. Be sure if you drive when you got a car. <laughs> Folks, that Drive Woo! Branch Fire Squad, Woo! right here in downtown Niles, Michigan. One more. Woo! One more. You want me to sing one more? I ain't sang one yet. 